Let me go ahead. Oh, there's one thing that um, I did want to start out with before we get into the presentation. And as we're talking to retirees, we're hearing um, the questions and concerns. So as I go through the presentation, I will try to address those questions that we're getting most frequently as we're talking to retirees. So one of the um, first questions that we're hearing is um, about the contribution or the amount that USG will be giving to retirees in 2016. And so um, I want to tell you up front that we do not have that number at this time. I'm not able to share that with you during today's meeting. And I'll tell you why. Um, the, um, every year, our office um, works with our um, financial office as well to determine USG subsidy for our health care. Normally that information is presented to the Board of Regents in the August board meeting. And um, the reason is because we need to wait until the legislature approves our budget. And so since that approval process, uh, the legislature just ended their session at the end of March and we just received approval for our budget. So that's when we find out how much money we have for the next fiscal year. So we just received those numbers. We're working through um, the, the budget that we have available. So that's what we take into account. We also look into, bless you, we also look into um, the, our expenses over the, the prior year. So we look at our claims expenses and um, we do projections for the next year. So all of that takes time. We have outside experts that we work with that help us um, calculate and crunch those numbers. And so again, this is the normal process that we work through and determine what, um, what we're able to um, contribute to the healthcare costs, not only for retirees, but also for our active employees. So um, what, we're, what we're working on is we're um, working on calculating those numbers much quicker, especially for the retirees and that, that contribution amount because of this change. So we're hoping that we have it earlier than the August board meeting. And as soon as we have that number available to you, we will um, certainly share it with all of our retirees, our institutions, so they can share it with you, okay? So I won't be able to talk about, about the funding amount. What we will spend time talking about today is first, why did USG make this change? So I'll give you some background and we'll talk about um, why the decision was made. We'll talk about what is changing. So I'll explain what is changing and what is a retiree health care exchange. That's what we'll be moving to in 2016 for our retiree yeah. health care coverage. And then we'll talk about the tools and assistance that will be available to you during this enrollment process because there's going to be um, extensive support available to you. And then finally, like I said, we'll make sure um, Lydia and I will answer, we'll, we'll stay here and um, take time to answer all of your questions. If you happen to um, think of something once you go home and you're talking to a neighbor or friend and you think of something, you're more than welcome to send it on um, to, H to HR um, here at West Georgia and we will definitely, um, they can forward it to us and we'll get back with you on that. Okay, so we'll go ahead and I want to spend a little time talking about um, why we made this change. So um, as many of you know, when you read um, the newspapers and as, as, um, as HR talks about the, um, the plans every year, um, healthcare costs have been increasing and they've been increasing much more than the cost of living. So normal cost of living has been usually around two, three percent. Um, healthcare trend is somewhere in the neighborhood of seven or eight percent every year. And so a bigger chunk of, of premium dollars are coming out of your paycheck, my paycheck, and USG is contributing a greater amount of funds to that cause. Um, also, we have rising healthcare costs at um, the university system, and that's because our retiree population is growing. We've got a greater number of retirees. And um, we know that very soon we have a large number of baby boomers that are getting ready to retire, and so that number is going to increase even more. Um, just to give you an idea of what the USG spends for all of our retirees, um, last year um, that number was around 85 million. And um, while that 
that's a big number. Um, USG made a commitment, made um, made a commitment to all of our retirees to provide that health care coverage. So while you were working here, um, you were working towards that benefit. And so we know it's important that you have a benefit for you during your retirement. But we also want to make sure that um, given these rising health care costs, that we have a benefit available for all of us that are, are working today too. So we have that benefit available for us. So um, part of, part of, part of um, when we're looking at this change, rising health care costs were a consideration. We also, the other thing that um, came into play was our rising retiree liability. The USG on our financial statements, we are required to disclose what our liability um, is for our um, retiree costs every year. And um, this is on our financial statements. It's something that we present to the board every year. For the last time, for the last time that we presented this number uh, to the board, it was $1.8 billion. And that, that's a huge number. And what that is, that is the liability that USG has for all of our current retirees and all of our future retirees. So that's why that number is so big. But it is something that we report all public companies and public entities are required to court that number. There's very specific um, requirements um, for reporting that number. And when the Board of Regents um, saw this number, and as we report this every year, this number has been increasing um, very quickly. And uh, part of that's due to our rising or, or growing retiree numbers. And also due to that, we have growing faculty and staff at our institutions. Um, so the Board of Regents, when we talk to them about this number every year, they had growing concern about this number and they specifically asked our office to um, look at solutions or options for how we can address this, this growing liability. Not so much that we know that it's going to go away because we uh, have retiree health care benefits, but how can we, what kind of changes or what kind of solutions could we come up with so this number doesn't grow as quickly? And just to give you an idea how quickly this number has grown, in 2008 when we started reporting this number, it was 137 million. And like I said, in the last time we reported it for 2014, it had grown to 1.8 billion. So again, not that we know that we're gonna that this liability is going to go away, but how can what can we do so this number doesn't grow so quickly? So that's when the Board of Regents again asked our office to start looking at solutions. We at the system office, uh, the HR office, we work with a total reward steering committee in which this group helps advise our office on changes to the USG healthcare plans for active employees and also for retirees. This committee is made up of faculty and staff from across our institutions, and we really try to leverage the expertise that we have within the system. So we pull faculty from our schools of public health. They have, um, they're already working and have experience and expertise in the healthcare field and um, what's going on in the healthcare field. So they really help us evaluate as we look at different solutions. Um, we also include a retiree on this committee. A retiree is, was involved as we were looking at different solutions. Um, we also, um, the chair of this committee is one of our presidents. And during the time when we were looking at this, the, uh, the different options for us, um, the chair, the, the presidential chair, was actually in the um, in the process of transitioning into retirement. So um, we definitely were taking into the best interest of our retirees as we had um, definitely on this committee. We have a retiree, we had a president that was getting ready to retire, and all of the, um, the faculty staff on that committee hope to one day be um, in all of your shoes that they're able to retire with a benefit. So um, during this process, it was over about a period of um, 15 to 18 months in which we were evaluating the different options. We also worked with a healthcare consultant from a national consulting firm that has expertise in this area. They, um, this person works with very large national employers and um, they also have experience with public um, and higher ed groups. 
And so we were looking at our different options of what we could do to address this cost. So we looked at um, some different options, although this was the one that was approved and, and recommended from this committee. There were other options that we looked at. Um, we also did a lot of analysis around um, you know, the cost and the savings. And we looked at what other higher ed um, institutions were doing to address um, this issue because um, they are dealing with this issue as well. USG isn't the only one. So there's other public employers, higher ed, and um, we also looked at private employers as well. So we, we looked um, and did benchmarking to, to see how others were addressing this issue, what had been successful and what wasn't. So um, that kind of background and research was done. Um, so all that to say, I want you to know it was a thoughtful decision. There were many involved um, from our campuses involved in recommending this decision and those with expertise in this area were involved. So um, after that analysis had been done, um, the recommendation for moving our retirees to a retiree health, health exchange was the option or solution that the committee recommended to the, to our office and then um, ultimately got recommended to the board. And the reason why is because this was the option that provided the most value for our retirees. So it really preserved the value of the coverage where we wouldn't have to cut back what that value or what that coverage is to you. Um, but also it provides our retirees with the most choices and the most um, tools and resources as you go through that decision-making process. And we'll talk more about it as I get into what the change is, but I just wanted to let you know that's really how the change came about. It wasn't that um, it, was, it was, you know, done um, without any consideration, without any thought behind it. Um, so the, the recommendation did go to the board in November 2013 and the board approved that recommendation. Um, that is, um, that recommendation is on the USG website. So if you want to see what was recommended to the board, you can actually go out and look at the November um, 2013 agenda and it will have that detail for you, um, what was recommended and what was approved. It was a two-part process um, that was approved, and some of you may know about this already, but the first stage of the process was that um, all, all Medicare eligible retirees, um, that the USG plan would serve as secondary coverage only. So we did have a small group of retirees that were not enrolled in Medicare Part A or B, or it was probably just B, um, because that wasn't really required at the time that they um, retired. And so um, we, that was a group of about eight to 900 retirees that we've been working with over the last three or four months, um, helping them enroll in Medicare Part B. And so again, that was just a very small group of retirees, but effective July 1st, 2015, the USG plan will be secondary coverage only for all USG retirees, or all USG Medicare eligible retirees, okay? And then beginning um, uh, January 1st, 2016, that's when um, Medicare eligible retirees and their Medicare eligible dependents will get their coverage through a retiree healthcare exchange and that's, it's not out on your own. We are going to be very involved and I'll talk about um, what we're doing to make sure that, that um, we stay very involved with this, this process and we will be. So um, one of the things, um, just to give you an example of another um, higher ed institution that's moved to this, um, this solution in the state of Georgia is Emory University. So um, I don't know if anybody talks to anybody at Emory or has any, um, ha has a, a friend or um, that's retired from Emory, but they have just recently gone through this process. We've talked to some of those retirees and we've, we've heard some good feedback from them. So if, if um, you know someone, you may want to talk to them. And... Okay, so we'll talk about what is changing. As I mentioned today, um, for 2015, Retirees, Medicare eligible retirees are enrolled 
in parts A and B, and the USG plan serves as secondary coverage. In 2016, retirees who are Medicare eligible will um, get that secondary coverage through the Aon Retiree Exchange. And that's who we partnered with is Aon, and we'll talk about them later in the presentation about why we chose them. So um, the benefit, USG will provide you a benefit. So today, when you pay your premium, um, um, as I talked about every year, USG determines what that premium is. And we pay a portion of that premium, and you pay a portion of that premium. And, and that premium is um, directly debited from your account every month. So in 2016, USG will be giving you uh, a contribution into a health reimbursement account. Okay, and I, I may say HRA uh, for short, but it's a health reimbursement account. We'll give you a contribution and then you will use that contribution to pay for your premium through the healthcare exchange. And we'll go through that several times, but I just wanna make sure to emphasize that um, USG is giving you a benefit, we're giving you a contribution. It's just in a different way than what we have done in, in the past. In the past, we've, um, we've, we've already given you that contribution by the time that you make your, your premium payment, and in 2016, you'll make your premium payment will give you the contribution and you'll use that to reimburse yourself for the premium. Um, one thing that uh, we wanted to make sure, again, to really emphasize throughout this process and with all of our retirees is that um, what is not changing in 2016 is our commitment to provide retirees a benefit. So um, that's very important um, for the chancellor. He wanted to make sure everybody knew that, um, for the Board of Regents, that this change is not a way for us to say we are trying to get out of paying a benefit for retirees. Um, that is not what this change is about. It's a way that we can help preserve that benefit. Again, it's a way that we can help sustain that benefit in a way that um, the, the, um, we can still give you a valuable benefit like you have today and you'll have different choices. Um, so it's a way that you can still get that benefit um, while um, still reducing costs. We have a problem with it. <laughs> I'm sorry, some people can't see. Oh, okay, all right, okay. all right, sorry, yeah. I was just hoping it wasn't that I was too <laughs> No, that's all right. That's great. Is that better? Okay, good. Okay, so again, um, it's not that we're getting out of the out of the of trying to pay a benefit for our retirees, or um, it's that we're really trying to um, preserve it and sustain it for all of you and for all of our many retirees that are coming coming um, behind you. Okay, so um, I'm going to talk a little bit about a retiree health care exchange and, and what exactly it is. Um, so, because when, uh, when I hear the word exchange, it really doesn't mean anything to me. Um, but what it, what it is, and I'll give a couple of examples as we're going out talking to retirees, they, they give me examples as they're starting to think about it. They're like, oh, you should use this example or that example. So I'll give you a couple and see what works for you. Um, so it's really like a marketplace where, um, where there's many different carriers and many different types of coverage all come together, okay? So again, um, lots of choices for our retirees. And um, there's the same carriers that you have today. So if you want to have Blue Cross Blue Shield, do, do you all have um, Kaiser? Kaisers? Okay, so um, if you are enrolled in Kaiser or live in an area where Kaiser is available, Kaiser will still be an option. So those two, those two insurance carriers will still be options, but there'll be many other carrier options as well um, that you'll see and, um, and have available to you. There's also many different plan options. 
Most of our retirees are enrolled in the comprehensive care plan right now, which has a $500 deductible. Um, and some of you may be enrolled in the Kaiser Senior Advantage, and then we've got maybe just a few that are enrolled in the um, Consumer Choice Plan, which is our high deductible plan. So there'll be plan options um, available to you just like the plan options you have today, but there'll be many more. So if you want, there, there's plans available that have no deductibles and no out-of-pocket costs. So if you want a plan like that, you'll be able to choose a plan like that. So many different choices. As I've gone out and talked to, to retirees, I have some retirees that say, I don't want any plan choices. I want a plan just like I have today. I'm in the comprehensive care plan, and I want a plan just like that. If that's the plan that you want, um, you'll be able to talk to a benefit advisor, and you will be able to tell that benefit advisor, that's what I want. Um, they will know, you will provide them with information about what plan you're enrolled in, and um, you can tell them, I want a plan just like that, and they can help you find a plan just like that. Um, I was talking to one retiree that when, um, we, when we started the meeting, or before the meeting, he walked in, he had already gone out because um, the Aon Retiree Exchange is actually a public site, you can go out there. Um, what we have arranged for our retirees is going to be slightly different because we, we contracted directly with them to provide um, <clears throat> to something specific for our retirees, but there is a public site and he had already gone out there and he had come in with 10 different options. And he said, I, when I talk to the benefit advisor, I want to see 10 options. So if that's you, you can see 10 different options and you can look at all of those. So they will work with you, they will talk with you. Um, and again, getting back to you, will get personalized one-on-one -on -one service. So every, every retiree will be assigned to a benefit advisor. You will have your own dedicated benefit advisor and you will have a specific time in which you, it will be an appointment time in which they will call you and you'll sit down and you'll talk with that benefit advisor about um, all of your um, health care needs and they'll get to know you so they can help you find that plan. Again, they'll help you find the best option to suit your needs. So let me give you a couple examples. This is um, the example I've been using because um, this is how I think about those benefit advisors. So think about um, back in the old days when um, you were getting ready to plan a trip. Um, let's say you were going to travel to California and you would call that travel agent. And that travel agent, you'd work with that travel agent and they would help you plan for, um, they help you book your airline presentation or reservations. Um, so they would find you the cheapest rate. Then they'd help you book your hotel. You would tell them, okay, I want a hotel with a pool, or I want um, two queen-size beds, or one king-size bed, or you tell them, this is what I want to do, and they would help you make all those reservations. So that's very similar to your benefit advisor. You will have a, um, you will sit down and talk with that benefit advisor, and they will know, want to know about you. They will want to know whether you travel um, across the country or whether you travel internationally. They will want to know if you have a summer home in, um, in the north and you spend four or five months up there, they, they would want to know that because you want to make sure you have coverage up there and, and providers up there. Um, some of you may live in Alabama. I, I was in a meeting you know, um, up north um, yesterday and some of them lived in Tennessee so that's going to be very important um, because uh, this retiree said I go to a hospital that's in Tennessee so they'll want to know that they'll ask you all the questions um, to get to know you they'll also ask you what providers do you see so they want to make sure that all the providers that you see are in the network so the plan options that they pull up for you um, will have those providers in the network. So they'll want to know what, what providers you see. They'll also want to know about the prescriptions that you take um, because they'll want to make sure that whatever plan options they bring up um, covers all the prescriptions. So the prescriptions are in the formulary. Again, if you want to um, stay or you want to keep the Blue Cross Blue Shield, that will be an option on the exchange. Blue Cross Blue Shield is an option. So that will be available to you. We also had a question about Silver Scripts. Um, we just moved to Silver Scripts in 2015. Hopefully you all know that from Express Scripts. 
Um, and so that's an option as well for the pharmacy benefit. That will be an option. So they'll get to know you. It's very personalized. It's for each person based on your own health care needs. And they will recommend a plan specific for you. Okay? Um, what it is not, we want to make sure um, you know it's not associated with Obamacare or the public health exchange. So you've heard about some of the difficulties that they have had over the, the past couple of years. Um, so it's not anything um, related to that. The retiree health care exchange, and this was part of that analysis and, um, that we did as we were researching our options, retiree health care exchange has been around for several years. There's many, um, there's, there's um, several leading companies that offer this. We chose Aon because they're one of the leaders. And um, it's a fully developed market. They've worked out all of those kinks and, and difficulties that you see going on in the public exchanges. So it's very different from that. There's 30 million retirees that are in the retiree healthcare market. So it's very big. And that's part of where you get um, where you get, when, when we talk about premiums, and I'll show some examples of premiums on the healthcare exchange, you see lower cost premiums for the same value plan. So when you think about the comprehensive care plan and what that total premium is, out on the healthcare, the retiree health exchange, the premium is lower because of how large that marketplace is. And again, it's 30 million, and all of that competition and spreading the risk keeps those prices low. So again, back to getting that same value, but at a lower cost. Okay, I have, um, as I was going through this, I, I thought it might be helpful to give a visual of how this will work. And um, again, back to why we made the decision, it's more choices and um, you'll, get, um, you'll get a lot of service and tools and resources, but. USG has contracted or partnered with Aon to provide this health exchange. And the health exchange, the Aon Health Exchange, they work with different carriers, okay? So they have partnerships with many different carriers, Kaiser, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Humana, Cigna. There may be others that you've never heard of. And um, they work with all of them and they design several different plan options. So each of those carriers comes to, to Aon with maybe 10 or 15 different plan options. So there's a lot of choice available to you. But um, one thing I did want to mention, it does vary based on the county that you live in. So if you live in a different county than maybe your, um, your friend, they may have slightly different choices than what you have. Just like Kaiser's not available across the entire state of Georgia, they're only located in, in metro areas, so those choices will vary slightly depend on where you live. Aon will provide very um, robust tools for our retirees and again, give you that one-on-one -on -one support to help you make the decision because this first year there will be a lot of choices for you, um, but if you don't wanna see those choices, you don't have to see them. And then USG will, will put a contribution into a healthcare account for you. Retirees, once you make your decision about the plan that you want to enroll in, um, you will pay the premium directly to the carrier, okay? So whether it's Blue Cross Blue Shield or Kaiser. So today, um, right now, ADP um, debits your account for your premium. In 2016, you can set it up where that carrier will automatically debit your account for that premium, okay? And then you can set it up so automatically you will be reimbursed from that healthcare account for that premium, okay? So that's how it'll work. It'll, um, your account can be debited uh, for the health insurance premium and then you will be reimbursed from that healthcare account um, for the cost of that premium. Okay, and because there's a many different plan options available, there's many different prices. So the premium will vary based on the plan that you choose. And the next slide, I'll give you some examples of what the premiums look like today in the, um, in the healthcare exchange. Um, before, but before we move on to that page, um, 
or that slide, I did want to just address something, and I probably already talked about it, but again, I just want to make sure we emphasize it as we talk to our retirees. Um, we have been getting the question, um, why are you kicking retirees out of the health care plan? <laughs> you know, why are you picking on us? And um, so I really wanted to address that really up front and make sure that you understand that you will still be a part of us. We are contracting with Aon to provide this service, just like we contract with Blue Cross Blue Shield. We have a contract with them, and there are specific services that they provide to all of our active employees and retirees right now. So that same, that same thing is happening with Aon Health Exchange. You're not gonna be out on your own. We are partnering and working with them to provide a very specific, specific benefit for our retirees. And the reason we can do this for retirees is because this market is available, it's fully developed, um, and as I mentioned before, they've, they've kind of got all the kinks out of there, they've got plenty of different plan options, plan design <coughs> options, so it was something that we could do for our retirees. And because it's very competitive, there's efficiencies in that market, and so we can also take, we can take advantage of some of those efficiencies and some of the competition to get lower costs for our retirees. So that's why we did it. Again, it's not that we're trying to, to push you out from, from USG, we will all still be here. Um, I will know throughout this enrollment process, our office will know when every single retiree enrolls in the exchange. We will know what plans you're enrolling in, just like we do today. We'll know who is not enrolling. So if we have some retirees that we haven't been able to, to reach to make that decision, we'll know who those are. So again, throughout the process, we work very closely with Aon and make sure that they're giving you all of the service um, that they, um, that they um, guaranteed that they would provide to you. And so throughout this, we need you to let us know that you're getting um, the best customer service that, that they promised they would give to you. And, and we'll be here so you can definitely let us know, let um, your HR staff at West Georgia know um, if, if you're having any issues throughout this process. Okay, so, um, Let's, um, I wanted to give some examples because this is a little bit helpful since we don't know the subsidy amount yet um, that we'll be giving retirees. I did want to um, just show you examples of premium. So when you start talking to your benefit advisor, there will be two different plan options that you will have. Um, and again, it will depend on where you live. So in um, the retiree exchange, there's Medicare Advantage options and that's similar to the Kaiser Senior Advantage plan. So anybody that's enrolled in that, um, Medicare Advantage is, is very close to that in that year. Medicare Part A, B, and D, the pharmacy coverage, are all rolled into one plan. And you don't really need to worry about that. Um, and that when you go to the doctor, you just pay a copay and everything is coordinated, administered um, behind the scenes. Okay, there's usually um, not deductibles in those plans. Um, and uh, that was the other thing. These Medicare Advantage, just like Kaiser, they have a very specific and probably smaller um, <coughs> provider network. So that's one thing that um, if you go through the process, you'll um, talk to your benefit advisor about that. But they usually have a very specific um, network of, of providers. As you can see, for those plans, the premiums are very are much lower um, than when we talk about the Medigap. So on the low side, if you have higher out-of-pocket costs, your premium might be somewhere around fifty-six dollars a month. Can you read out the numbers? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So um, for Medicare Advantage, um, on the low side, um, the premium would be around fifty-six dollars per month, and on the high side, a very um, rich plan. Um, where you probably would not pay very much out of pocket would be around $122 a month, okay? So just to give you an example of those premiums, so you can see that's, that's um, uh, lower than, than what you have today. Now, um, on the Medigap side, so then the other um, option you're going to have is a Medigap plan. And a Medigap plan is basically like if you're enrolled in the Blue Cross Blue Shield um, consumer, I'm sorry, comprehensive care plan in which Medicare A and B are your primary, 
and then the Medigap plan is a supplemental type coverage, and then you also need to enroll in a Medicare Part D plan. So you'll have to choose two different type of plans, one for your medical and one for your pharmacy. If you're in the comprehensive um, care right now, you're already enrolled in Medicare Part D. It's just through the USG plan. So we made that change a couple of years ago, 2013, in which we put a Medicare Part D plan within the USG plan. So um, in 2016, you would have to choose your own Medicare Part D plan. But again, Silver Scripts options will be available for you. So just to give you an example, um, a Medigap premium for low. Sure. Uh huh. So Part D would be actually Yes, and I'll give some examples. Yes, that is correct. Good question, I missed that. Um, <laughs> so um, the question is about whether the um, HRA, the money that USG puts into the HRA account, whether that's taxable, and it's not. It's it's not taxable. I'm sorry? Under federal and Under federal and state, right, yeah. Okay, so um, question is about dental. Um, good question. Um, so dental will continue like it is today for you today. So if you are enrolled in the USG dental plan, um, that will continue in 2016 just like it is today, and it will be um, deducted from your um, from your bank account just like it is today. Okay. So um, let me just read off these numbers just in case you can't see them. For, so for a Medigap, a high plan, that premium would be $270 a month. And when they said high, they took the richest plan available to retirees. Anybody that has a friend or relative that, that may have um, purchased a supplemental or a Medigap plan, um, this is a plan F, if you've heard anybody talk about that. Plan F in which there's no deductible, <laughs> and there's no out-of-pocket, no co-pays, no co-insurance. So basically, you pay that premium, and the plan picks up everything else. You would not pay anything out-of-pocket, okay? So that premium is 270 and then you would have to also purchase a um, prescription drug plan, Part D, and that would fall anywhere from $15 a month to 133 again, depending on which coverage you choose, okay? So that is per person. Okay, each, um, each retiree, if you cover your spouse under the plan, each person will make their own decision for their plan. So it will depend on each person. If you want to choose the same plans, you can, okay? So you will have um, each retiree, each spouse will have their own appointment time with a benefit advisor in which they will talk through um, uh, their their decision. So if you would like to have that conversation together, you can do that. That's certainly an option. And if you want to ch um, choose the same plan, you can do that. But each um, retiree and the spouse, as long as they're both Medicare eligible, they will each have their own account and get the contribution. Okay, we haven't decided what that contribution is or whether it will be the same. And again, we'll have that information um, to you very shortly. Okay, um, if the, um, one of the questions that's come up is if the, um, let's say a retiree is Medicare eligible but their spouse is not Medicare eligible, um, that spouse will stay in the USG plans under the USG coverage until that spouse becomes Medicare eligible. Um, same thing, vice versa, if the retiree is not Medicare eligible but their spouse is, the spouse will get the coverage under the um, under the exchange and the retiree will stay in the USG coverage until they turn age 65 and then they'll move into the exchange. That's how it will work. Yes, ma'am. Um, for instance, my husband is on Medicare Part A in his Okay. All right, he's not Part A, he's eligible for Part B. But he continues to work and he's still on Part A. What would he be enrolling? How would he be covered? 
Okay, so let me make sure I understand. Um, you're the retiree. Yes, sir. He's still actively at work and still covered under his plan. Are you covering him under our plan right yes. now? Yes. Okay. Um, since he's still actively at work and still has coverage, at the time that he no longer has that active, active coverage available to him, mm -hmm. um, you could then um, add him to our plans. But since you're already covering him, um, he really does. You really don't need to have that coverage for him under our plans because at the time that he loses his coverage, um, when he's actively at work, at that point you could add him onto our coverage. Okay, at this time, uh, our coverage is his secondary insurance. Mm -hmm. So could he continue to be covered and have us as his secondary? Yeah, I think we might need to take that away. I don't want to give you any incorrect information, so why don't we take that away and we'll get back to okay. you. Because that's a, kind of a complex situation yeah, you have going on. <laughs> okay, all right, let me keep going and then I'll promise I'll... I'll I have a question uh -huh. about, about this um, uh, mortgage contribution. Okay. Um, it says that um, Okay, so the question is um, about the USG contribution. Um, USG will, um, each retiree or their covered um, spouse dependent who's Medicare eligible will have an HRA account and USG will fund that account. Either, um, <coughs> we don't know at this point, probably on a monthly basis, you will get that contribution into that account. Um, the retiree will pay directly the premium to the carrier so that carrier would be, um, that uh, premium would be debited from your bank account, and then you would be reimbursed from the HRA account for that premium. Does that make sense? No. Okay. No. You don't get the money first. We, okay, so you have, um, you have the HRA, which is the health reimbursement account, but it's, it's not, we're not going to give it to you, it's an account that you'll have, um, with Aon. Aon holds those funds, and it's very similar to a health savings account, if you've heard of those, or FSA, although it's a little bit different, I don't want it, it's not the same thing, but um, because the health savings account is actually an account in your name. This is an account that will be in your name, but it will be held by Aon. Aon will hold, hold those funds. Those funds can only be used for your premiums, or for out-of-pocket medical expenses, okay? And so that money will be held. Once your premium is deducted from your account, that money will come from the AON account to reimburse your bank account, okay? okay. so we never physically hold that money. You never physically hold that money, yes. Um, <coughs> so, I'm not understanding what you mean by reimbursement. I'm going to pay a premium and then get it back to me? So um, you are going to pay a premium to the carrier, whatever carrier that you sign up with. And again, it could be Blue Cross Blue Shield, it could be Humana, Cigna, whoever you choose. Let's just say it's Blue Cross Blue Shield. So Blue Cross Blue Shield, instead of USG, right now, we debit your account for that premium. In 2016, the carrier, Blue Cross Blue Shield, would debit your account. So they would debit your account for your premium, and then USG is going to put money in account for you. Once that money goes out of your account to the carrier to pay for your premium, we're gonna give you funds to reimburse you for either all or part of that cost of that premium. It'll depend on which plan that you choose um, how much, what percentage of that premium. For some retirees, if you choose a lower cost plan, that reimbursement may be your entire premium. If you choose a very high plan like the Medigap F, which, covered, which has no out-of-pocket cost, it's a much higher value plan than the comprehensive care plan, you may have to pay out-of-pocket for part of that cost, just like you do today, okay? Does that make sense? Okay, good question. So um, let me talk a little bit about, did I miss anything, Lydia? No, I think I raised my hand at one point and then you covered it. 
covered it. So okay. I'm good. She's keeping me on track, and I'm, she'll she'll stand up and she'll give some examples too at the end. So yes. Oh, the PDP that is the um, Part D. That's the preferred um, drug program. So that's the Part D premiums. And again, as you can see, um, on the low side, fifteen dollars a month. On the high side, one hundred and thirty-three. So it just depends on how much you want to pay out of pocket. If you want to pay nothing out of pocket, those premiums are, are going to be higher. Yeah. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about the Aon Health Exchange. Why we chose to work with Aon, and. Um, and then I have a slide about the timing and, and what will be happening over the next several months. And then I'll open it up for questions because I know that you probably have a lot of questions. So um, one of the things I want to tell you um, is that I'll, I'll cover this, go into as much detail, but in September, August and September, we will be having in-person meetings again, just like this. And you will actually have a licensed agent from Aon who will be here to talk to you and they'll be able to give you very specific information about how the enrollment will work. So just want to make sure you know this is not the last time we're going to be in front of you talking to you. We'll be, um, we'll be here again very close to the enrollment. We'll meet with you. If you're not available to come today uh, or to come to those meetings, then we'll make sure um, we'll be mailing information to you and there'll be plenty of resources to get this information. But one of the reasons that we chose Aon is really due to their depth and breadth of experience in um, the benefits area. They, um, not only are they um, one of the leaders for the um, Retiring Health Exchange, but they also are um, experts in many different other areas. Um, such as benefits administration and um, benefits consulting. So we do work with them in some, uh, some other areas. <coughs> they um, actually serve one out of 14 Americans. So across the country, they serve one out of 14. So um, ha really have a depth of experience. The other reason we chose them is because of the broad range of plan options available under their exchange. So again, um, they were the one exchange that were able to offer all the plan options that our retirees have available to them today, both the Kaiser and the Blue Cross Blue Shield plan. So that was really important that our retirees, if they wanted to stay with Kaiser, they would still have that option. They have some of the most robust tools available for retirees as you go through this process. So they're gonna meet you where you are and I'll talk about the different options that you will have because some retirees want to see things um, in writing. Uh, even, even I like to see things in writing, so it's not just um, retirees, but I like to see things in writing, so you may want to see things in writing too. Some of us are fine with looking at everything online or talking on the phone with somebody, so they'll have those, those different tools available to you. And then finally, they are recommend, recommended by the National Council on Aging. So um, when the National Council of Aging was looking for a partner to help retirees with making health care choices, they looked across all the different um, providers of the exchanges and they chose Aon just because of their expertise in this area and because of the level of resource and support that they provide. And so um, that was very important too, that they've been recognized for their um, quality of service that they provide to retirees. You can actually go out on the National Council of Aging website and you can look at those tools and resources that are available for retirees today. But again, keep in mind that we're working with Aon specifically to provide um, information, communication materials um, specific for USG and there'll be a website link um, for the plan options for our retirees that's going to be slightly different than the one that's available on the website. And that website is um, mymedicarematters.org. So anybody that's interested, it's mymedicarematters.org. If you want to go out there and look, you're, you're more than welcome to. So um, as we talked about, you will have benefit advisors that will be working with you throughout the process. A couple of um, items about the benefit advisors, they are licensed and certified. <laughs> and experienced in Medicare-related insurance. So they go through rigorous training. Um, there's certifi certification requirements that are set up by the state 
that they must meet. Um, they go through this once a year, so you can feel confident that when you're talking to that advisor, they are very knowledgeable in the different um, coverage options that they'll be talking to you about. If for any reason throughout this process you feel uncomfortable with the advisor that um, was assigned to you, you can request to speak to a different advisor. That's not a problem at all. If you are experiencing any challenges, um, you can always reach out to let us know. We certainly want that feedback if, you're, if you feel uncomfortable with that person or that person isn't um, giving you the service that you, that you need. They are not incentivized to um, steer you towards any plan options. These are salaried employees. They're not um, sales, so they're not trying to sell you. They're trying to get you into the best plan option for you. Again, there's no incentive for them to get you into a Medigap plan versus a Medicare Advantage plan. Um, so whatever coverage is best for you is um, the process that their goal um, as they work with you. And then finally, they are dedicated to you throughout this process. So um, typically what Ann has said is that um, for that first call um, that you talk with your, your advisor, those calls can last up to 90 minutes. Again, they'll spend as much time with you on the phone as you need to make sure you understand all your options. If you would like a friend to be um, with you as you talk through um, your different options, or if you want a relative or your spouse, you can have that person on the call. You'll just need to authorize um, for them to talk through those options um, with somebody else in the room. If um, many times um, retirees don't want to make a decision during that first call, um, but they, they are more than happy to set up a separate call, a second or a third call, as many times as you need to talk to that advisor, and it'll be that same person on the phone talking with you, so you won't need to start over and start talking with somebody else. Every retiree will have their own appointment time in which that advisor will call you. You will get that appointment time in the mail. It'll come in your open enrollment packet, which will be mailed in September. Once you get that appointment time, they'll ask you to confirm to make sure that they know that that's good for you. If it's not, you can call them back and set up another time to talk to them. Okay? Um, and that's what I want to say, is that they will call you. You will not have to call them. You will not have to wait on the phone. I know we have some concerns about having to call in and wait an hour to talk to somebody. That's not what this is. Everybody has their own dedicated person, which they will be speaking to. I have a question in the back. Great question, great question. Um, no, um, unless, you, unless you consider Chicago overseas, but no, the, um, the phone center or the um, call center is in Chicago. Again, they're highly trained, licensed. Um, they're going through their um, renewals during August and September, so they will have just gone through all of that training and will be prepared to talk about the new plans. But good question. Um, I had a suggestion in an earlier meeting that um, they need to establish a, a call center in Georgia, and I said I'll, I'll start working on it. So <laughs> yes. before we talk to this person. Be available on the paper on the web, a list of all the companies and the plans. Yes, yes. So you can think it over before you talk to the person. Yes, absolutely. So let me move to the next slide. Um, so as I talked about, there will be a number of different choices um, to meet you where you are. So I know that some of you are probably very um, technology savvy and want to go out to the internet and do all your research. So you can certainly do that. We will have that website linked to you. That'll come to you in your open enrollment packet. And um, it'll also tell you all the things that you want to start thinking about before you have that meeting with the benefit advisor. So you can go out, do all of that research, and, um, and um, come up with the different options. 
But what I would recommend, you can sign up um, online without talking to the benefit advisor, but I would highly recommend that all of you talk to the benefit advisor because they may come up with some things or, or make you think of some things that you wouldn't think about. And so especially during this first, first enrollment, they are really there to help you. That's part of their commitment to us when we're partnering with them is that they would provide that service and that resource. So as you go through this process, even though there's a lot of information online, I would really recommend that you talk to the benefit advisor on the phone. So some of you probably don't want to go out and do all that research and don't want to go online. So if you don't want to, you certainly do not have to. I've talked to some, um, talked in other meetings, but about um, some people don't have a computer, and so you don't have to have a computer. Um, the, they um, will call you, you will have that one-on-one um, -on -one session on the phone. Again, that's the main way that they, um, that they do those advising <coughs> sessions. There are not in-person sessions, so I just wanna make sure everybody's aware of that. Um, if you want to see something in writing, they will mail you the application, or once you talk to that benefit advisor, if you want um, information, um, mailed to you, you will get that information mailed to you. So again, like I said, I know some, some people like to see it um, in writing. I like to have it in writing. Um, so they will, they will get you those um, printed materials before you make that selection. Yes, sir? Yes, yes, you will get a phone number where you can call them because um, there's some concerns about security, so especially if they're calling you. Now, they will call you at, at your appointed time. So when they call you, it'll be at an appointed time, but if you don't feel comfortable, they will provide you a number and you can call them back. So that's, that's not a problem at all. <laughs> you can still call Denise if you want to. She can help you. I was gonna say, um, I know some retirees have a very um, close relationship with their HR offices, and I don't want to offer this up um, for every institution, but if you feel comfortable, you've worked with um, Denise or, or whoever at your institution as you um, go through this process, if you want to go in, I'm sure they would be happy to help you um, You know, make that first call. They can be there for you. Um, I'm sure they don't have time to sit with every one of you, but um, if you really need that extra hand holding, I'm sure Denise would be happy to, she'll probably kill me after the meeting for saying that. <laughs> okay, I've got one more slide. Let me get through this one. I promise we'll, we'll open it up and, and um, take some questions. So here is the timing of when the enrollment process will take place. Um, during <coughs> April, we are meeting with all of our retiree groups to explain the change. In May, there will be a website launched. That's not the place where you can go get plan information. That won't be ready until um, later this fall. But a website will be launched where you will have tools and information to learn about the change. So um, anything that we're sending to you in the mail will be available on this website. We'll have some, throughout the summer, we'll have some enrollment videos um, talking about some of the things you need to think about as you're preparing for enrollment. That kind of information will be available out on the website. We will also mail a transition guide to retirees in the month of May. It will have information very similar to what we're talking about today, but it will also have other information um, available to you, just like some of the things that I've you know, that you want to start thinking about pulling together. Um, it'll talk about the HRA some more, give some details about that. May through June, we're doing retiree advisory training. I'm sorry, retiree advisor training. What that is, is we're, we are asking for volunteers at the system office for retirees who are interested to help advise our office as we go through this transition process. So um, these retirees who volunteer would see some of the communication materials in advance before we mail them out, and they could help provide feedback to our office about what may be missing um, and what we may want to consider as we make the decisions and move down um, towards the enrollment, um, as we move forward in the enrollment process. So if you are interested in helping provide that feedback, you would be also working with the AON team um, as they're developing the communications and um, as they're getting ready for that enrollment period. 
um, you would be working with them. So anyone that's interested, you can see us after the meeting. We've already got a long list of, of volunteers, which I'm really happy that we're going to have several retirees to, to work with to provide us feedback. Um, over the summer, we'll, we'll post information videos to the website. In August, actually July, August time frame, you need to look out in the mail because you'll get an invitation for those um, second in-person meetings um, in which the Aon um, <coughs> license representative will actually be here instead of us presenting and talking about the enrollment process. So again, they'll give you much more detailed um, information. So those meetings will be in August and September. Also in September is when you um, will receive your open enrollment packet. Okay, so you'll need to be on the lookout for that. In that packet, um, there will be information. Um, it'll have your appointment time, just like we talked about. So be on the lookout for that. And um, Open enrollment will be three months this year. It will be October 1st through December 31st, and we wanted to make sure it was a longer period to give you plenty of time, um, because all of you will need to talk with your benefit advisor, so plenty of time to do that and to think about all of your um, choices and to make your decision before December 31st. 